We're live now, everyone. Good morning to everybody, uh, and thank, welcome back. Bless those that uh, could come and those that are being able to watch. We're continuing our study in uh, 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. Uh, just can't wait to get to chapter 4. Um, so please, again, like... When I say something wrong, correct me if you hear me, because it's hard to correct it on the, on the video. If I say the wrong verse, the wrong word, when I mean hope and I say help or anything like that. Uh, those of you that uh, interact, go ahead and, and uh, post your questions on Facebook. And I'll try to get back to them later. Obviously, I can't do it right now. But I could, uh, before I leave, I could try to look and see if there's any questions that I might be able to answer. That being said, last week we, were, we finished up being justified in the Spirit. And we put to the point that Jesus was justified in the Spirit. And... What does it mean to be justified? Uh, was that, you know, to be rendered as if you're faultless. You're, you, you haven't done anything wrong. Uh, many people say, I've been justified by the blood. Meaning that uh, I am completely sinned, sinless. They'll say uh, the word like justified, just as if I had never sinned. But did Jesus sin? Jesus never sinned, but Jesus was a sinner. He was born a sinner. Jesus had to be justified by the Spirit, not by his actions. And Jesus did some incredible actions, did he not? I mean, we are set free because of the actions of Jesus, but Jesus still was justified. For you who don't know what I'm talking about, go back, look at last week's... Uh, teaching on this. Uh, it, I don't want to spend more time on this than, than we need to, but uh, Jesus was justified in the Spirit. And this is the litmus test for what a teacher needs to know. He needs to believe that God was manifested in the flesh and that Jesus was uh, justified in the Spirit. Now the next uh, verse we have in chapter uh, Timothy chapter 4, or chapter 3, verse 16, is seen by angels. So, I want to take the, I didn't put it up there, but uh, take the chance for us to read that. Um, let me see if I can't get back to the very beginning here, where we could put it up on the screen. Where it says, this is a faithful saying. If Verse 16. 316. Got it right on the right on the on the TV screen. And is it big enough for you? Yeah. So we can read we can read it. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. So this is the mystery. Paul is explaining this to Timothy. God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen by angels, preached among the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up in glory. So we're going to pick up with seen by angels. Okay, so to be seen by an angel, let me get back to our... Uh, presentation here right here I got it written up on the screen mark if you want to uh, do that um, Des has hers paperwork Bob's looking on his thing seen by angels uh, you notice on here I have hyperlinks on the word seen and angels if you would get me your email I could send this to you uh, and then you could look on it but uh, To be seen by an angel, you know, is, is pretty good. What, what, what does it mean to be seen? I got it written down on our, on our notes. 
Uh, I showed you right here, it is uh, Strong's 3700 or 3700. And what does it say right here? It's optimal to look at, behold, or allow oneself to be seen. So if you're seen by somebody, you're to be looked at, or you allow somebody to see you, right? If I've been seen by your family, I allowed myself to be seen by your family. I didn't hide it. I didn't work in um, the dark. But how about angels? Seen by angels. Well, Strong's is a, Strong's 32 or G32 as a messenger, an envy, one who is sent, an angel, a messenger from God. So could a human being be an, uh, could they be an angel? Um, uh, say yes. Yeah. Yes, a human being, many times, angels are referred to, it, uh, it translated as angels, when it, the context indicates that they're human beings. Uh, not all the time, and most of the time not, but in some, in some translations. So, Jesus has allowed himself to be seen by angelic beings, uh, creations that have a terrestrial body, uh, oh, and he's also allowed them to be seen by humans, right? By the apostles, by those that were sent out as messengers. Uh, we need to, to move on with that. We need to understand the testimony of a truthful witness carries a lot of weight in a court, in courts of men. So, Jesus was manifested in the flesh. Jesus was seen by angels. Well, if you're talking, let's just look at it for a little bit. If he was seen by human beings that are messengers of God, would we say the uh, Apostle James was a messenger of God. How about the Apostle John? Was he a messenger of God? Yes. Okay, so there was a lot of witnesses. As a matter of fact, the scripture says there's over 500 witnesses. Okay, now this, in a court of law, a witness carries a lot of weight. Did George Washington exist? Our first president of the United States? Yeah, how do we know that? We have witnesses to that, so that all these years later we could do it. Now you know there's more written about Jesus Christ than George Washington. There's more reliable accounts that Jesus of Nazareth, his life, and that he died on a cross, and that he was innocent. There's more of that written on, uh, about that than actually George Washington. Imagine how much more important it is in the heavenly realm. So if men, if the credibility of a statement is, is credible because you have multiple people saying, hey, I seen it, I seen it, I seen it, was it just a random account? How about if angels seen it? You know, angels can't be around all, all the time at once, right? Angels can't be in two different places at once. But how, what if you're a fallen angel? What, what if you're a follower of Satan? What if you're a demon? They can't be all around at once. They know their time is short. How do they know their time is short? They've seen Christ. Christ didn't hold it out. He didn't make it a secret that he was the Christ. As a matter of fact, he made it plainly open to everyone, including demons, and forbade them to proclaim his name. Christians, okay, now, you know, that's talking about in the heavenly realm, right? Now, whether Christ had been seen by men that had a good testimony, or by heavenly angels, doesn't change the meaning of the word seen, does it? He was seen. Now, Let's open up the book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 3. Acts, chapter 1, verse 3, New King James Version says, 
to whom he also presented himself alive after his suffering with many infallible proofs, being seen by them during forty days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Now the context of this is Jesus has been risen from the dead. Jesus has a new body, that terrestrial body now, that has no blood. A body that can eat food and talk and drink, but Thomas could stick his hand up in his, his side. A body that could walk through walls. So Jesus presents himself alive. Not a ghost, a live physical being after suffering many infallible proofs. I mean, this was in a court of law, absolutely an open and shut case. Jesus of Nazareth was crucified and rose from the grave. He was seen. It doesn't change the word seen. However, the word angel could be changed, whether it's man or, or, or angelic beings or uh, physical beings. Beings with a telestial body or beings with a celestial body. Um, I did say angels had the telestial. Uh, I misspoke. Celestials, heavenly, terrestrials, earthly. I continually make that error. Please do not say I'm an idiot. I already know that. Angels have celestial being, uh, bodies. Jesus was given a celestial body. Okay, when he was resurrected. Moving on now. However, it does open doors as to what, if any, is being showed to angels. The Bible tells us in 1 Peter 1.12 that angels desire to look into the gospel message that the Holy Spirit is bringing to men for the salvation of their souls. So angels desire to look into. So was, was God showing this or presenting it to angels? He was presenting it to men. Angels don't know the gospel. This is why in the Old Testament, angels are the mediator of the Old Covenant. In the New Testament, angels don't know. It, nowhere in the New Testament does an angel tell you right from wrong. Nowhere in the New Testament does an angel present the gospel. As a matter of fact, in the New Testament, angels come and talk to people and say, Go get Paul, or go over there, or send for Paul, or send for another one, and they'll explain to you the gospel. But in the Old Testament, an angel explains the new covenant, the old covenant to Moses, it says. First Peter chapter 1, verse 12. To them it was revealed, not to themselves, but to us that were ministering the things which have been reported to you through those who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven, things which angels desire to look into. So do angels know the gospel? No. So I think the context is this, is Jesus did not hide the gospel from angelic beings, good angels. He didn't hide the gospel from fallen angels. He didn't hide the gospel from men. He didn't hide the gospel from men that fought their father was the devil. He didn't hide the gospel for those whose names were written in the Lamb's Book of Life before the foundation of the world. Jesus presented himself completely to every creation. Every creation Jesus was seen. He didn't hold back anything. The gospel was presented to everybody. Now, John, why is that important? Well, there's some teachings that say Jesus never presented the gospel to the Jewish nation. Therefore, they're still under the Old Covenant. I think it's... It, uh, is it John Hagee? Anyway, one of these guys, he's quite a Zionist, and he, he believes in the replacement theology. He does not believe that the old Jewish nation have to believe in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior because he never presented the gospel to them. This right here is a complete 
absolute contradiction to that statement. Jesus presented the gospel to every single creature creation on that ever was created. That, that includes an ant. Not that ants need to be saved. Okay? Let's look at desire to the, I said it, to bring men the salvation of their souls, right? So, what is your soul? Under here, under the Strong's, let's not get this consider, uh, confused with everything else, is G5590, right? G5590? Strong's G5590. Suhey. Suhey. How you get Suhey out of that, I don't know, but that's how you pronounce it. Okay? And the outline of physical... Uh, uh, biblical usage is breath, the breath of life, the visible force which emanates the body and shows itself in breathing of animals and of men. So do animals have the spirit of the living God in them? No, but animals have a soul. They have breath of life. Okay? Does the non-Christian, the old nature, do they have the breath of life in them? Yes. Do they have a soul? Yes. Does God did die die God die for everyone's sin? Yes, including the whole world, including those whose names are not written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Okay, that which is uh, their life in the life being a living soul, the soul. So we can see that this is not the newborn again spirit. So God reveals things for the salvation to bring men the salvation of their souls. What does a man who's not going to become a new creation, who's not going to become a Christian say, what does he need to be saved from? How about the devil? How about the power the devil has over the world, over the creation? You know that when you look at history, mankind on the entire face of the earth, including Australia, including uh, North America's uh, up where we have Eskimos, you know, Russia, Alaska, and that, the, the Amazon, every place on the face of the earth where there is recorded history of some type, it changed at the cross, when Jesus was resurrected from the cross. You know people used to be a lot worse back then than they are now. Now, how many people agree that America is going bad? Yeah, we're doing bad things. How many people agree that there's other people in the world that we have had to go fight that do terrible, heinous crimes? Yes, we do. But you know what? We don't see anywhere in history, not even in China, where China has massacred people, not even in Hitler, where Hitler persecuted the Jewish people. It's never been to what it was at the time of Christ, what the Romans did. It's never been, how about when you read the account of the Bible about when the Jewish people went into the Promised Land? Didn't God tell Joshua to completely annihilate people groups? To stab and cut the pregnant women so that it would kill the infants? That was a terrible, terrible thing because God had to completely annihilate and remove that plague from the earth, kind of like a cancer, because Jesus hasn't shed his blood. Jesus didn't cleanse them of all their sins. They were such a wicked people that they would take their firstborn child and offer it up to Moloch. Take this little infant baby and put it in the hands of this idol, kind of shaped like this, and they would put fire under it, and they would put it, called Baal worship, and they would roast their baby alive offering it to this God. We don't do that today. Abortion's pretty bad. 
Some individuals are pretty bad, but as a whole nation, we don't do that. They don't do that anywhere in the entire world that we know of. Life is much better after the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who won the battle. Satan's hands got tied. Now he's getting more and more power, but his hands got tied. Let's go back to 1 Peter chapter 1. We read verse 12, but let's go back to verse 9. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse uh, 9. Receiving the end of our faith, the salvation of our souls. So we get this gospel because we need the salvation of our souls. Um, you know, uh, a lot of the word salvation, soul, is sozo, healing, sozo, deliverance, sozo. You know what? Jesus died for the ungodly. Jesus paid the price for the ungodly. Jesus paid the price for people that he knows will never become Christians. Jesus set them free from the power of the devil. You know, now you could be a non-Christian and you could resist the devil and the devil has to leave you. You don't have to believe in Christ to have victory over the devil. Because the power of Jesus paid the price. He stripped Satan of all his power. The only power Satan has is the power that we give him because he's deceived us and to making him think he has a lot of power. Now the Bible also tells us that angels are ministering spirits that give aid to those appointed to inherit salvation. Yes, angels do the will of God for the seed of Abraham, yet aid is not given to them, meaning there is no hope of reconciliation with God for fallen angels. I have actually heard people preach and teach that angels will be saved, that God will save Lucifer, God will save the fallen angels. The Bible is clear, even though God has not hid the gospel from them, he will not give aid to them. Hebrews chapter 1 verses 13 through 14, then chapter 2, verse 16. We open up our hyperlink. You guys, you got to get my email. The technology is so awesome. I got my Bible right here, but you notice I haven't even flipped the pages. I like reading the Bible, but when we're doing a presentation, this is awesome. Um, let me, while I'm leaning forward, leaning forward is okay. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 13 and 14 state, But to which of the angels has he ever said, Sit at my right hand, till I make your enemies your footstool? Are they not all ministering spirits set forth to minister to those who will inherit salvation? Side note, rabbit, trail, segue. This is a great scripture I use when I talk to Mormons. If Jesus was just the brother of Satan, and Satan was an angel, then the scripture is a lie. The scripture is truth. He says, to which of the angels did he ever say, sit at my right hand? He said that to Jesus. Therefore, Jesus cannot be the brother of Satan, according to the scripture. All my Mormon friends, all those of you out there would like to contradict that, go ahead, email me, write me, put a note on there. The Bible is clear. Jesus is not an angel, the brother of Satan, who is in, Satan is an angel. He, Jesus is not a created being. Back on focus, let's go to chapter 2, verse 16. For indeed, he does not give aid to angels, but he does give aid to the seed of Abraham. <coughs> So does he give aid to the seed of uh, Billy Joe? Does he give to a Milichek? Does he do, give his, uh, aid to the seed of uh, uh, Goliath? Does he give aid to the seed of anyone that is not the seed of Abraham? And when you read this, this does not mean to the, the seed of Ishmael. It's the seed of Jacob, 
Isaac, Abraham. Who is a Jew? Paul is clear. He is a Jew, not one who is circumcised outwardly, but one who is circumcised inwardly. Who is the seed of Abraham? All those that become Christians. Jesus was even talking to these Pharisees when they were having high and mighty scene. Uh, you, your, your father, you were born a fornication. Your, your father's Joseph. And he had sex outside of Mary with Mary. And you're just a son of fornication. And Jesus replies to him and says, You are your father the devil. Your father's not Abraham. If your father was Abraham, you would believe me. Because Abraham wrote about me. Abraham worshipped me. How could that be? You're not even 50 years old. And you would say your father's Abraham? Well, Jesus is talking about the spirit that is in him. Remember we talked about the I am? That the entire Bible is about Jesus? That Jesus is referred to as Jehovah in the Old Testament? The seed, eight, is given to the seed of Abraham, not to anybody else. Salvation is not granted to anybody else. Eternal salvation uh, to be the bride of Christ. But is the power of Satan stopped? Yes. Does everybody on earth have power and victory over Satan? Yes. But angels are sent as ministering servants. You know if you're a child of God... If you're of the seed of Abraham, you have angels appointed to you. Bad things happen. But I'm going to testify. I know this is a rabbit trail. But my brother, there was a time when he really heard from God like a radio. I'm not saying you don't now. But I'm just saying, there was times you go driving with Bob. And I have testimony. I wasn't with him this time. If I speak out of turn, please tell me, Bob. But there was time he was driving the motorhome or some vehicle, I think, with mom and dad. And uh, God told him to stop the vehicle. And uh, maybe told him twice, I'm not sure. But he stopped the vehicle right there, in a, right before a turn. In the turn. In the turn. In the turn. Thank you. And, of course, dad being the backseat driver and mom being a backseat driver. So, you know, like, what are you doing? And I guess he goes around the turn and you see a car, what, in the trees or? Off the cliff in the trees. Yeah, car, car, come oncoming tra traffic, going around a turn, onca goes off the road and goes off a cliff and, and gets hung up on a tree. If got, Bob did not stop the vehicle right then and there, that would have been head on collision. Angels are sent to minister to help, not to bring salvation. When they minister to us, they're not bringing salvation. They're not bringing healing. They're out guarding you, protecting you. They're ministering. They're actually your servants. Now, don't be all high and mighty and be telling your angel what he's got to do. But God did send them out to protect you. Many times when you got problems, you maybe need to understand, you could be telling an angel to come do this. Come fix it. Ah, uh, man, I, my, I regress. I was with this one lady living in an RV park. We were there ministering to her. Her, her toilet was all plugged up. Terrible. She did it wrong. She was not running water in it. She just let the toilet go. The, Jesus just going to the tank and not letting it fill up and then flushing it. Uh, which you're not supposed to do. Those of you that have RVs, you know what you're talking about. But anyway, it was plugged up to the max. Couldn't do anything. She had uh, she had uh, estimates, estimate you have to get a whole new whole new holding tank. She didn't have any money. So they called me to do it. So I prayed to my angels, and I told my angels, my ministry angels that were there for me and for her, to go inside this tank and shovel, clean out a passage, break this 
clog up, and guess what? It worked. You don't believe me? I did it. It worked. Professionals went in there, plumbers, and uh, RV could not fix it. It got fixed because I prayed. All I did is pray and pour water down it, and it completely cleaned out. You go, you, you take that for whatever you were. Getting back. Therefore, all spirits know that Jesus is King of kings and Lord of all. All spirits. Thus they are subject to submit to him and must obey his commands. Matthew 8, chapter 8, verse 28 to 32. some of this to clear up my RAM. <clears throat> Matthew 8, chapter 8, verse 28 through 32, reading of the New King James. When he had come to the other side, to the country of the Gazarene, he met two demons possessed <clears throat> men. So two men possessed by demons. When coming out from the tombs, exceedingly furious, so that no one could pass that way. And suddenly they cried out, saying, What have we to do with you, Jesus, you Son of God? These demons knew who Jesus was. These demons knew that Jesus was the Son of God. Jesus did not hide it from them. Jesus allowed himself to be seen by demons. The demons continue saying, Have you come here to torment us before the time? Hey, they know they're going to be tormented. They know there's no salvation offered to them. Now, a good way off from them, there was a herd of many swine sweeting. So the demons begged him, saying, If you cast us out, permit us to go into the herd of swine. And he said to them, Go. So when they had come out, they went into the herd of swine, and suddenly the whole herd of swine ran violently down the steep place into the sea and perished in the water. i got to tell you, a little segue again. Many people take out of scripture completely out of context. The context is, is that demons knew that Jesus is the Son of God. That's what I'm preaching People, well, I've heard people preach, well, God came to do this because these were Jewish people doing wrong. They had a herd of swine. Wrong. The, the country of the Gazarenes was a Gentile country by the Sea of Galilee amongst, among, among the uh, Israelites. You know, we had the Ammon. They were sons of what? We have Moab, they were sons of Lot, or the grandsons of Lot, you know. We have Moab, uh, 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 Edom, Esau, the descendants of Esau, all right there. So the, the, the city of the Gazarenes, these were not Jewish people. These were non-Jewish people raising herds. Now, was God trying to get rid of pigs? No, they could eat pigs all they want. Why did the pigs do that? Because God gave them authority to do a, to a pig whatever they want. And pigs don't have the ability to say yes or no. You get an animal that's possessed, they don't have the mind, the wherewithal, that even an atheist, a non-Christian has. So a demon comes into us, we can say yes or no, even back then. Now, now we have more power. But back then they could say, oh, you got to obey me because. Right now they can't. All you have to know is, no, you, I don't have to obey anything you say. But back then they still had to get permission. They still had to do it. But guess what? Pig don't need no permission. So what do demons do? The same thing the devil does. The same thing the thief does. Come on, what? To kill, to steal, and to destroy so what did these demons do? They killed the pigs. Amen? Little sub segue. These, but we got to put all these things together. Jesus preached to Gentiles all the time. He didn't withhold preaching to Gentiles as it was the story of the woman from Tara. 
Furthermore, okay, continuing on, furthermore, angels, whether fallen or faithful, must submit to men that speak the will of God in the name of Jesus. Let remind you that Joshua, the son of Nun, in you in, the son of Nun, commanded the sun to stand still, and it did. Now this wasn't as Brother Bob brought up about Isaiah asking for the sundial, a sign that the sundial go back 10 degrees. This is where Joshua, Joshua says it. Joshua doesn't pray to God to do it. Joshua says it. Joshua 10, 12 through 13. Then Joshua spoke to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. And he said in the sight of Israel, Son, stand still over Gibeah, and the moon in the valley of I can't even pronounce that word. And so the sun stood still, the moon stopped, till the people had a revenge upon their enemy. Is this not written in the book of Jasper? Jasper? So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven and did not go up or down for about a whole day. Who said this? Joshua said this. Who gave him the power? God. Joshua was talking to God, but Joshua had to say it. Then the disciples, meaning the followers of the way, gathered together to pay for Peter's release from prison. Pray for Peter. Pray for, thank you. Then the disciples, meaning the followers of Jesus, of the way, gathered together to pray for Peter's release from prison. This resulted in angels being sent to release him. You know we have power to send angels out to do reconnaissance, to do uh, recovery, to get POWs. You know, this was not SEAL Team 6. These were people like you and me, filled with the Holy Spirit that prayed. And angels were literally sent out to release Peter. Acts 12, verses 5 through 7, record this miraculous event. Peter was therefore kept in prison, but constant prayer was offered up to God for him. For who? For Peter. By who? By the church. And when Herod was about to was about to bring him out. That night, Peter was sleeping, bound with two chains between two soldiers. So we can visualize Peter's got a chain on this hand, a shackle on this hand, shackle on this hand, between two guards, two soldiers. And the guards before the door were keeping the prison. So in addition to that, they had a guard at the doorway. They didn't have fire escape. The only way in, the only way out. We had guards guarding that. Behold, an angel of the Lord stood by him, that would be Peter, and a light shined in the prison, and he struck Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise quickly. And his chains fell off of his hands. And he walks right out. You got to realize, can an angel move matter? Can an angel make... Can, I'm saying these have bodies. I'm trying to tell you they have bodies. They're ter uh, uh, celestial. They don't have blood, but they have bodies. Can an angel make a physical, material object move? Apparently so, because guess what? These angels slap or tap Peter. How about the story of the angel that uh, wrestled with Jacob? Or the story is really Jacob wrestled with the angel, and the angel touched his hip, and he limped. So, angels have physical bodies. I'm sorry. They don't have the ability to reproduce. They cannot mate. The Bible is clear. They don't have blood.
but they do have a physical body. And guess what? Christians could command, or commission might be a better word, command, just so it's really arrogant. But Christians can tell angels to go break somebody out of prison. Preached among the Gentiles uh, will be, I think we can stop right here, uh, even though we haven't, is there, is there any comments or something that I could, that you might think I should explain more or anything? Anybody got anything to say, uh, excuse me, before we can sign off? Where do I read about comments? It doesn't look like I got any comments. Uh, it says Igor joined. Great to see you, Igor. I don't know if you're there still while I'm watching it, but what a blessing you are. Uh, people out there, as we continue reading, we must continually read the Word, read what it says, and let's not ignore what Christ has done for us. We don't have to be sick. We don't, Jesus paid the price for that. We don't have to go to hell. Jesus paid the price for that. And we got, have many benefits. And one of those benefits we have right here on earth is we can commission angels to help us. Even if it's as simple as cleaning out your toilet. In Jesus' mighty name, be blessed everyone.